Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Today, part 10 of the WWE 2011 pay-per-view reviews and year in review. So, Hell in a Cell 2011 is today's pay-per-view. Sorry guys, I'm just going to adjust my camera there. It was a bit too high. Apologies for that. So yeah, let's have a look at the artwork and then we'll go into the pay-per-view itself as usual so yeah I, I do like the poster for this this front uh, cover artwork here very good with uh, John Cena's face on fire <laughs> yeah very cool 15 certificate here in the UK and obviously you get the blu-ray extras with the blu-ray version silver vision release There's the spine with the logo and the Hell in a Cell structure uh, underneath the 2011 there, which looks cool. No interior artwork, just the disc. And there's the disc artwork itself. That's pretty cool. All the mesh and everything else. So this had a four hour, five minute run time go over the exclusive bonus content now before I put it down so we had Monday Night Raw 26th of September 2011 which had Mark Henry versus The Great Cali, John Cena versus Christian CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio and Smackdown 30th of September we had Intercontinental Championship match between Cody Rhodes and Sheamus Randy Orton versus Christian and much more Various screenshots to the right hand side we have the triple threat match for the WWE Championship in a Hell in a Cell CM Punk, Alberto Del Rio and the champion John Cena Mark Henry defending his World Heavyweight Championship also in a Hell in a Cell against Randy Orton So it's over 20 feet high. It's more than five tons of solid steel. It's Hell in a Cell. The record-breaking 10-time WWE champion John Cena must defend the converted title against not just one, but two former WWE champions, Alberto Del Rio and CM Punk. All three men battle in the career-threatening, history-making first-ever triple threat Hell in a Cell match. Plus, after 15 years, Mark Henry is finally the World Heavyweight Champion. Now the most destructive champion's Hall of Pain leads straight to hell where the Viper awaits. Randy Orton challenges Mark Henry for the World Heavyweight title in WWE's most diabolical structure. Who will survive the Devil's Playground? Find out when the superstars of Raw and SmackDown present WWE Hell in a Cell. So this was from the New Orleans Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana on October 2nd, 2011. We had 9,400 in attendance for this, guys, and 182,000 by, by rate, sorry, guys. So the matches then, the, the opening match was between Sheamus and Christian, which... Pretty good match, I guess. I didn't have really anything I can complain about about this match. It was a good opener. Um, Sheamus picking up the victory after a bro kick. I don't think I wanted Sheamus to win. I thought Christian deserved the win more. But like I said, I don't really have any problems with this match. Um, it is what it is. Sheamus won. Let's move on. So WWE Tag Team Championship match, Air Boom, Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne against Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. Good match, I guess. Um, but as I, I think I've said before in the on the previous uh, pay-per-view, which was uh, Night of Champions, that Air Boom work better as singles wrestlers. So Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne work better as singles wrestlers rather than a tag team. It's the same with Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. 
it's like WWE just decided just 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 throw a load of uh, random wrestlers together and you know as tag teams and see how they get on, which is sometimes a good idea. Like Goldust and Booker T, for example. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head at the moment. That you know, just get thrown together and then they work. But these two teams, in my opinion, I I don't think they work as you know very well as tag teams, rather than they do as singles wrestlers. But again, that's just my opinion, guys. And it didn't mean that it was a shit match or anything because it was very enjoyable. But yeah. That's, that's all I want to comment about that one at the moment. Moving on. Uh, Divas Championship match. Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. So this is the third straight pay-per-view of these two going at it for the Divas Championship. And this is probably the my favourite of the three matches. I didn't really like the SummerSlam match between them both. The Night of Champions one was a lot better than the SummerSlam one. But I did prefer this one out of the, the three uh, that I've seen so far. And hopefully that's the last of uh, the matches between these guys now. And they've ended this feud. Uh, girls, sorry, should I say? <laughs> Ladies. I don't know. What's the correct term to use? I know, I'm just trying to be a gentleman. Yeah. Ladies. Let's, let's st stick with that. I was going to say divas, but they don't really use that term anymore now, do they? So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. That was the best of the three matches I've seen of those two. Moving on. Again, as I keep saying, Intercontinental Championship match. Cody Rhodes uh, defending his championship against John Morrison. And Cody Rhodes, um, done, he decided to do away with the, the Intercontinental Championship of that time and bring back the older version with the white strap. If you guys know, know the one I mean, like from the 90s. And I prefer this uh, version of it. And yeah, I'm glad he did that. And he said he wanted to like be remembered as a like a great intercontinental champion, such as uh, Bret Hart, you know, like Bret Hart and Roddy Piper, I think he said as well, and a few other names. But yeah, this uh, the match itself wasn't that good. I but. He, I was thinking he could have gone against somebody like Randy Orton for this. It would have been good for this pay-per-view, but obviously Randy was booked in the World Heavyweight Championship match. But, it, you know, for what it is, it's, uh, it was okay. And, yeah, like I said, I like the new look then. The then new look, sorry, because it's not the same Intercontinental Championship anymore. I did like him bringing back that uh, retro kind of uh, Intercontinental Championship. Definitely um, the best looking Intercontinental Championship of, you know, of my time of growing up and everything. Of all the ones we've had so far, it's definitely been the best one. But I'm going to stop going on about that now because I'll start talking about Intercontinental Championship matches and, that, and that's not what we're here for. We're here to review this. So I'm sorry, guys, I'm going off... Uh, subject of Hell in a Cell pay-per-view but yeah that that was okay I guess that match um, next uh, Sin Cara versus Sin Cara it was blue Sin Cara against black Sin Cara and they both put on pretty good um, kind of match what kind of Lucha Libre style Lucha Libre and the crowd, they just didn't seem to want to get behind it. It was a bit, I don't know, they, they just, the crowd kind of let it down. And the lighting, I never do like the lighting in the uh, Sin Cara matches. I think it was Blue Sin Cara who picked up the victory here as well. Not that it mattered because, you know, <laughs> it was a bit of a strange one. These uh, doppelganger matches, as I like to call them. Never seemed to work very well, in my opinion. Um, Kane versus Kane, The Undertaker versus The Undertaker from uh, SummerSlam 94 as examples. And here we have Sin Cara versus Sin Cara. And it's just, you know, why do we need this doppelganger match? 
and the commentators referred to them as Sin Cara 1 and Sin Cara 2, but who was Sin Cara 1, who was Sin Cara 2? It was just confusing and you know, it's it wasn't a bad match as I said, it's it's worth checking out, but it it was pointless. To me it just felt pointless. They could have just done something like that on Raw, on an episode of Raw or SmackDown. I can't remember what show these guys were on, so apologies for that. But yeah, that's all I've got to talk about with uh, Sin, the Sin Cara versus Sin Cara situation. It was a bit of a strange one. We had World Heavyweight Championship match inside of a Hell in a Cell. Mark Henry defending his championship against Randy Orton. And this felt very strange to watch because, you know, over the years, Mark Henry felt more like a mid-carder to me and I got used to him in that kind of... Uh, at that kind of level that makes sense guys so when he was elevated to the world title picture and became champion it was kind of a shocker to me and fair play to him you know he does deserve it he did deserve it sorry but um it just didn't seem right that randy orton was struggling against mark henry in a match and that's how this kind of came across to me you know, and if you'd watched, uh, if those two were to have gone at it, say, a few years prior, and then Randy Orton would have just had, you know, had him put away with an RKO within a few minutes, the way that Mark Henry used to get booked. But, you know, that that's not his fault or anything. It's not, none of their fault. But that's just how I, it just felt strange to me with that. But the match itself, it was okay. It wasn't a bad match. To be honest, none of the matches on this uh, pay-per-view were, were bad or anything. But it's just um, very strange to watch that one. But yeah, Mark Henry obviously retained. And yeah, he goes on to Vengeance next, which we'll be covering as the next uh, part of this 2011 review. Year in review, sorry guys. I keep forgetting to add year in review. And then, anyway, last but not least, the Triple Threat Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Championship. We had champion John Cena versus CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio. Del Rio sorry, guys. The, the match itself was very good. The ending of the match, uh, where we had Del Rio trapping John Cena outside of the Hell in a Cell structure, and locking the, the cage door. Um, and he had, uh, I think he had an iron bar with him, if I remember rightly, or some sort of weapon. I think it was an iron bar. And um, he used that on CM Punk and just beat the hell out of CM Punk with it. And then um, John Cena couldn't get back in and Del Rio picked up the victory to become WWE champion once again. Which was kind of annoying. I didn't like that. But what I did like is what happened afterwards. So I'll just... Um, because I forgot to fill you guys in of what's been going on in between matches and that. So R-Truth and The Miz weren't allowed in the, in the arena. So they purchased tickets and tried to sit in the, uh, you know, in the crowd. And they were escorted off the premises as far as I can remember and um, they managed to get back in again so there was like some serious seriously shit security issues there uh, they got backstage and then uh, Triple H said to John La Laurinaitis you know you know call the cops or you know some shit like that we got to get them out make sure they stay out kind of thing and uh, they made sure that they got removed again apparently and then the the Hell in a Cell structure started to rise after the match, after Del Rio had uh, won the championship. And then two hooded guys jumped from the crowd, uh, went under the structure, and then the structure lowered itself again. And basically the Miz and R-Truth had hijacked the ring kind of thing and just... There were two officials in there, if I remember rightly, and they were just getting beaten up. And so was uh, Del Rio and 
CM Punk and loads of superstars were coming from out the back to try and, you know, get in the cage. The cage obviously still locked where Cena couldn't get into it earlier. Triple H come out as well. He's like, you know, open this damn door or whatever it was, he said. They're all trying to get in there and it was just absolute chaos and The Miz and R-Truth were just, you know, completely, you know, trying to make a make their presence felt if that makes sense you know that they're the guys not to mess with and and every time the officials was trying to get back up again and the Miz would give them a beat down and then I think they used the that that same iron bar that Del Rio used earlier on CM Punk on the officials as well and yeah it was absolutely chaotic it's so much fun to watch as well and eventually we had security i think police as well coming in and they got the door open and they got them out handcuffed both our truth and the maze were handcuffed and then triple h jumps them both as they're being escorted from the uh like on the ramp kind of thing from away from the ring from the hell in a cell and it's just absolutely nuts and then the the officials were pulling back triple h and it was just everything was just chaotic and it was a very good end to the pay-per-view that's the best way i can describe it uh, um with what happened guys i'm sorry if i missed anything out i didn't write a lot of it down in my notes i just tried to memorize that last scene because um I, my eyes were just glued to the screen. I'd completely forgotten that this angle had happened and it was so much fun to watch. I, I like endings like that or, or um, you know, those kind of uh, dramatic, you know, encounters or whatever you want to call them. Very good stuff. Yeah, so anyway, I've missed off a few special features there. So we've got uh, JR interviews Mark Henry on Monday Night Raw from the 19th of September. Uh, home video exclusive Matt Stryker interviews Alberto Del Rio from the 2nd of October at NSL. But yeah, guys, this was definitely a, a, a step up from um, Night of Champions and SummerSlam. I did enjoy this very much. Um, very good ending, like I said. I was very pleased with that. I give this an 8 out of 10 for overall for presentation, extras, matches. I Like I said, I didn't have any matches that I could find fault with. They were all good. The, like, like I said about the New Orleans crowd, they could have been a bit more, you know behind a lot of a lot more of the matches and a lot more of the wrestlers especially the Sin Cara one it just felt very disappointing and a bit of a letdown to be honest just my opinion though guys you let me know in the comments below if uh, this deserved an 8 out of 10 today or was I right about everything if I've missed anything let me know in the comments below as well especially about that brawl at the end with uh, our truth and the Miz absolutely amazing that was <laughs> i can't stop thinking about that one now it was really cool but yeah this is part 10 complete then guys um give me a thumbs up if i deserve one today and i'll look forward to bring in part 11 to you which would be vengeance with a collapsed ring on the front cover artwork there and we'll find out why that is soon and it's exciting to do these uh, reviews as well because if it's younger viewers that are trying to get into wrestling but they just want to hear a review of what happened rather than watch the entire thing, you know what I mean? It could be interesting for them as well. For you, for you guys watching, if you if you never watched any of the 2011 before, and it's a pleasure to do them for you. I do enjoy it. I did have a few, you know moments where i thought to myself oh, do i really want to carry on after that over the limit as an example that was a bad one that was a definitely a bad egg that one guys but no this hell in a cell that really cheered me up and it was really good and i do recommend this if you've never seen it before guys it's awesome definitely worth checking out uh, anyway guys i'm gonna stop uh 
yammering on now. Been nearly 20 minutes. So I'll see you again soon for part 11, which will be vengeance. You stay safe. Peace.